It is not our intention to have done this later on, but due to prior discussions we had with Minister Alpha Tijan Uri, and we mutually agreed because they have um, some other important functions to attend. We really did not want to keep them, put them on hold, and so we actually planned to do the COVID-19 part after the presentation of Minister Alpha Tijan As I indicated earlier, I wish to acknowledge the presence of Harold Thomas, the risk communication lead NACOVAC and Health Education Manager, Ministry of Health and, and Sanitation. With him, we have Michael Jones. Michael Jones is very instrumental in the COVID-19 vaccination in Sierra Leone. Um, so Harold and myself would say a word or two about COVID. I would just wish specifically to talk about the, we know, that the UK, the United Kingdom government had put a total of 59 countries on the red list. We have received indication that at 4 a.m. on Monday, which I think is the 19th, Sierra Leone will be on the red list based on the risk assessment that the United Kingdom government has done. And this decision has been taken by the Department for Transport. So what this means, effectively, is that as a red list country, you can't travel to the United Kingdom from Sierra Leone unless you are a British or, a, or an Irish national, or you have a right to permanently reside in the United Kingdom. We believe that this is quite unsettling, especially at the time when commercial flights had resumed and a lot of things had opened up within the context of COVID-19 all over the world. So we just wish to just, just take a few um, highlights, just as a refresher, based on what has transpired, perhaps um, leading to this. And I would wish to speakly talk about what this should mean to us as Sierra Leoneans. So first, we are fully aware that Sierra Leone had two previous waves, wave one and wave two. And having gone successfully through wave one and wave two, and in our reasonable estimation, we believe as a response, we effectively and su successfully managed those waves to the admiration of the international community. We're aware that in November last year, the US Centers for Disease Control had listed Sierra Leone among four African countries where you could go and they considered that the health and travel risks emanating from COVID-19 were low. So on that basis, Sierra Leone, Rwanda, Benin, and La Côte d'Ivoire were listed as four countries they deemed low risk to travel. The dynamics with respect to the fight against COVID-19 in Sierra Leone changed dramatically with the third wave. As we are fully aware, the third wave has peaks significantly higher than the first and the second wave. And as we are talking about the third wave, some countries are even now projecting a fourth wave and some are now projecting a fifth wave. With the third wave, we have also been grappling with the Delta variant, one of the variants of concern. And science has established that the Delta variant is aggressively more transmissible than the, the original traits that we had. And it's, it's, it's within the range of 65, 85% transmissibility. Our positivity by June 2, was 1.3%, by June 8, 2.8%, by June 15, 2.7%, by June 20, 14.4%. Remember June um, 20, that was the time we recorded 113 cases. And June 27, it was 13.7%. So after the 13.7% positivity, I recall we now had discussions with the presidential task force 
which laid the foundation for the broadcast of His Excellency the President on 1st of July, announcing the measures to help the country to suppress the third wave. The week immediately prior to His Excellency's broadcast, we had a total of 523 confirmed cases. That was the week immediately prior, immediately preceding His Excellency's broadcast, 523 confirmed cases. Once His Excellency made the broadcast announcing the wide range of interventions to suppress uh, the third wave, the cases came down from 523 weekly to 292, which represented a 44% drop in cases. The week following His Excellency's broadcast was the 67th week of the outbreak in Sierra Leone. The subsequent week, we also witnessed a drop from 292 cases weekly to 233 cases weekly, a further 20% decrease. As we speak, unlike previously when we had about 14% or 13%, 13.7% positivity, which was actually 27th of June, our positivity has gone below 5%. We believe that the country is witnessing a decline in cases, and if you look at the epidemiological curve, we believe that we are plateauing and we are bending the curve, but perhaps we need one further cycle of a week to have a definitive statement on where Sierra Leone sits on the epidemiological curve. By 7th July, Beds in treatment centers and care centers, which totaled a little over 400, 46% of those beds were occupied. We recall that when we scaled down on the workforce, because case numbers were low, we also scaled down in terms of beds in treatment centers and care centers. We had gone beyond 1,000 bed capacity. But when we scaled down because of the low case numbers, we reduced our bed capacity to a little over 400. So when I talk about 46% of beds occupied, I'm actually talking about 46%, not of 1,000 beds, but 46% of a little over 400 beds. So by 7th July, 46% of beds occupied. By 14th July, 37% of beds occupied. So it means even case management is working assiduously. And we see the recoveries that we record on a daily basis, which is quite encouraging. So all of these put together give us an indication that the measures as announced by His Excellency the President are working, and that for us as Sierra Leoneans, we should all come together, comply with the COVID-19 measures, and make sure we take our COVID-19 vaccines. Our tests are now averaging 5,000 per week, so we have ramped up on testing and also we are intensifying surveillance. We can realize from our vaccination uptake that it has increased uh, tremendously, especially in the Western area, and that would explain why we have now run short of the AstraZeneca vaccine. And we hope that, that they would, would have um, that replenished um, early August. So anybody who may have taken the first dose of the AstraZeneca and you are due for your second shot. If that is not available now, please be on notice that government is working assiduously to make sure that we land uh, a complementary stock of AstraZeneca as fast as we can. We have to bear in mind that for the Delta variant that was detected, first among two samples, some passengers, we have detected the Delta variant among some passengers, including United Kingdom. As we talk, for those of us who are monitoring international channels, we see that the United Kingdom, as of yesterday, recorded over 42,000 cases. And the Delta variant is now accounting for about 96% of the cases in the United Kingdom. Even in the United States, the Delta is now detected, um, I think, in all 50 states. And cases have gone up exponentially in the United States. Um, um, with the exception of the states of Maine and South Dakota. 
In the Netherlands, we have seen a 500% increase in cases. And in Australia, 12 million people are now under lockdown, stay at home. For those of us who are expressing concerns, why is it that the government of Sierra Leone has made face mask, I mean vaccination, a requirement to access public buildings? Well, United Kingdom Parliament has approved that vaccine will be man a mandate, it will be mandatory as at October for all workers working in care homes. So we also see that Tokyo, where they are having the Olympic Games, Tokyo is now projecting a fifth wave. So what does the red list mean to us, or what should it mean? For us as Sierra Leoneans, we, much as we believe that there is no fundamental difference between the COVID-19 situation in Sierra Leone and a good number of countries that are not on the red list, and for that reason, we believe that the basis for the determination would be very unfounded, arbitrarily designed, more so when Sierra Leone was a safe haven. Sierra Leone never took a step to blacklist or red list or ban flights from countries that were experiencing the worst. And I think some Sierra Leoneans are beginning to call on reciprocity. Because for all of us, it is our responsibility to protect our people. But we will not focus too much on that. What is important for us if we are, this tells us that the COVID situation in Sierra Leone has wider international implications. And this should encourage and really motivate all of us as Sierra Leoneans to come together, comply with the COVID-19 protocols, wear our face mask all the time, avoid public places, wash our hands all the time with soap and clean water, and let us take our COVID-19 vaccines because they are determined, clearly established to be safe, and to be effective to protect us, our families, and our loved ones. Africa has to do very well in terms of vaccination because I listened yesterday to the WHO Regional Director, Dr. Moeti, who was indicating Africa is yet to go beyond 1.5% of its population. So we are yet to vaccinate beyond 1.5% of Africa's population. So it means we have, we have a lot of work to do with respect to vaccination. So I may wish to bring in Harold Thomas to say a word or two and Michael Jones to talk to us about status of vaccination. And it will be a pleasure to receive a few questions from you. Harold. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister. This is just a quick update. Um, the, today's update um, will be given at um, P, P. So this is for yesterday, and then for yesterday, the total confirmed positive cases cumulatively stands at 6,100. New, no new deaths. Total number of deaths is 113, and we have 26 new cases, and new recoveries were 28, and cumulative recoveries stands at 4,035, and uh, we currently in quarantine, we have 467, and we have a cumulative of uh, 16,000, 521 who have gone through quarantine since we started. And then um, for week 27, um, we have a total of 238 um, confirmed um, positive cases compared to the previous week, which we had um, 412. And then um, we also have 233 cases over the last seven days compared to this previous, um, uh, um, the, the immediate seven days that we have 292. So um, we have a decrease 
further decrease of 20% of cases. And the average daily cases now stands at 33.3. And then there is a sharp decline in the reported incidence of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Liberia and Sierra Leone. And there is a slight increase in COVID-19 cases in Guinea. So um, this is the object. Thank you very much. I just want to say thanks to the Deputy Minister for information for giving us this opportunity. And then so just a quick update regarding um, COVID-19 vaccination. And um, as at today, um, total number of people vaccinated. And then from our district direct report, there's 134,000 who are taking the first dose. And then second dose is 32,174. And then those who have been captured in the system, or DHIS2, we have 118. 928 and for first and 20,980. And for a targeted um, population, and um, since the vaccination is by phase, we have covered 22% of the targeted population of 631,760 so far. And then um, this range between 60% um, of the people vaccinated are male, 40% are female, and then um, majority of the people who are vaccinated are people from all the category of which, and then um, the total number of people vaccinated is 18,000, some hundred who are healthcare workers. Current stock status, um, as you are aware, is that um, as our district stores, we are completely out of AstraZeneca vaccine. We only have sign from vaccine, of course, which has been approved and have EU listing approval. And then um, we have a total stock of about 170,000 in country. Um, we will we'll be expecting um, within August. And we'll be expecting and um, 20, 20, 250,000 of doses of AstraZeneca, which will be procured and through the World Bank. And then um, also from the African medical supplies, we'll be also anticipating to have 275,000 doses of Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Then um, we also be expecting 6,000 doses of AstraZeneca. And then hopefully by first week of August, second week of August, we'll be having a AstraZeneca back in country. Um, currently, we have 14 at the various regions. And then um, the purpose of the various 14 is to see how best we can um, clean up our data and ensure that there's proper management of the data system improve on the security quality of uh, our data system and also to do supportive supervision, coaching and mentoring of data officers at this level. We also be running a new stock system management tool and then using our DHI system and then the training also is ongoing. With this visit that we've Done, we also have um, providing high IPC materials and vaccination tools at vaccination sites, and then so that um, all the sites are up running. Currently, we are running about M72, M75 sites across, and of which um, include 34 mobile teams across the country. I know there's issue related to payment of um, vaccination team members. This is also something we want to clear. And then, of course, we are expecting um, NACOVAC is doing all its best, and then all of our team members will be paid um, soon, and then the process is ongoing. 
And um, so far, so good. I think that's uh, all I have for vaccine updates. Thanks very much. And then. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jules. Um, questions, please. Um, we take um, four questions, so we call it a wrap. Yes? Okay, take the mic at the back. Over there. Hey, look at me. Take it at the back. Good afternoon, Mr. Jamil. Good afternoon, all. I mean, Vanya is my name, and I'm working with ARV. With regards to um, the red list, uh, Mr. Jamil, um, I seem to be I'm confused because if you go through um, the provision created, I'm starting to be corrected. If you go through um, the provision, provisions created by um, the UK government, people traveling from Sierra Leone as a part of the United States country are supposed to be quarantined for 10 days. That's if, if you have taken the two dose of the vaccine. At the same time, um, there is also another provision that people from Sierra Leone and other United States country are not supposed to travel to um, the United Kingdom, just like how you are saying, only people that are British citizens and so forth. So I want some clarifications with regards to that. There is, a, uh, there is a saying that you should be quarantined for 10 days, that's it, if you have taken the two dose. And also, you are not supposed to travel to the United Kingdom. Another um, thing, again, is that I need to understand that um, the vaccine is set to be expired tomorrow. Again, I'm starting to be corrected. So I want to know what is the lifespan of this vaccine. Thank you. Yes. Yes, sir. How many countries are getting this register? How many countries have the black registered as an Amishadeh? Uh, uh, How many countries have registered as Amishadeh? allow the minister and the team to respond. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for us to really understand the red list, it's, it's good for me also to speak about the green and the amber, so we have a, 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 a full picture. So, in, in the categorization, if you're coming from any country that's on the green list, what you're required to do is to do your pre-departure test and upon arrival, you will also do tests. In some cases, they will determine day two, sometimes day five, or day eight, as the case may be. So for AMBER, you will be required to get into isolation. Uh, and for now, it will be home isolation. The, what the advisory is now stating is that 
by July 19th, mandatory quarantine will not be necessarily will not be necessary for persons who have a double dose of the vaccine. So for red list, what it actually means is if a Sierra Leonean wants to go to the UK and you don't have a right to permanently reside in the UK, you are not allowed to travel. So you either have to be a British national or an Irish national or you have residency rights for the United Kingdom. So for the red list now, the scope is quite limited. That is the, the effective interpretation of what the red list is. So even if you go into the, 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 the UK.gov, that is the advisory that is put out by the Department for Transport. Um, which countries are on the red list? Or uh, We are aware that the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have placed Sierra Leone on level four. And I am sure, I think it was the last press briefing or the briefing before that, I actually took us through the UK listing for level four. Uh, because you have a situation where they would say, if a country is not putting out data, or the US does not have enough statistics to make the judgment, that is one level. But then you can actually start from low risk, moderate, high, and very high. So level four is very high. So what we see with respect to the UK is pretty much in substantial part akin to the level four that the US had placed, but not to the extent that they have said you only travel if you are, like the UK has done, if you are a British or Irish national, or you have a right to permanently reside in the United Kingdom. That is what it is. For us as a government, and this is the posture we have taken, in terms of giving an interpretation to all of this, for us as a government, we accept the fact that the third wave, and especially with the detection of the, of the Delta variant, substantially changed the complexion of the fight against COVID-19. The benefit of hindsight, perhaps, Sierra Leone should have taken a position to ban flights from certain countries. Perhaps, and, and there is a school of thought that holds this preponderant view so for us as a nation, we have a right to also evaluate uh, the COVID-19 situation, not just in Sierra Leone, but also maintain very strong and active intelligence and data around other countries and do what is necessary to protect our people. I think every country, given the right to sovereignty, must be able to take those positions. And I'm aware that discussions before even before the third wave, there were substantial discussions and there was a school of thought that said, forget about whatever diplomatic backlash this would cause, take a decision to protect your people. If you have countries that are recording exponential rise in cases, incident rates, 50%, sudden increase, and countries that are having variants of concern, take a decision and ban flights from those countries. Perhaps Sierra Leone was very considerate Sierra Leone never took that position, it never took that route. So perhaps Sierra Leone is now a victim of good consideration, perhaps. But as a response, we are also evaluating um, the range of interventions that are open to us. But we believe that looking at the statistics that we have, and we are very transparent about them, looking at the statistics that we have, the question we ask, how is Sierra Leone fundamentally different from COVID-19 in other countries? But as I said, as Sierra Leoneans, what this tells us is that we have to get serious with the fight. And for people who believe that, who, think, who are going into vaccine hesitancy, who refuse to wear face masks, people who trumpet a lot of human rights, that this government is all set out to trample on our rights, Let's understand what this red list means, that when it comes to the fight against coronavirus, it has to be nationally owned. And let us bear in mind that the COVID-19 situation in Sierra Leone has wider international ramifications. We are working very seriously to make sure that this complexion changes because for us, it is an unfair, a very illegitimate characterization of the response in Sierra Leone.
We accept it because it comes from a sovereign country. Mm -hmm. Britain has the right to make a determination yes. as to the best channels it, it has recourse to to protect its people. But for us, it's a responsibility for us now to make sure that we prove to the world that this is not who we are. And that responsibility rests on all of us as Sierra Leone. Thank you very much. All right.